You know, recently I've been seeing a lot of comments online asking for a comparison of the OnePlus 12 against the iPhone 15. And I was like, man, what sort of comparison is that? But then I realized that the iPhone 15 has actually gone on sale and it's available for lower than the price of the OnePlus 12. And to understand the interest, we put out a community poll and you guys all wanted a comparison of these two phones, which is precisely what we are trying to do, trying to ascertain if you should buy the OnePlus 12 or the iPhone 15 and try to make that decision easier for you guys. If If you are here for the first time, I'm Ishad. You're watching Chakit Dig English, your destination for detailed, incisive gadget reviews. Now, talking about the design, the first thing obviously anybody notices is the back of the phone, and the iPhone 15 has this frosted glass finish. This is also a sort of like a matte finish, but it's got a really nice marble look to it, and in fact, even the feel is of marble, but it's of course glass. And the glass protection on the rear is Corning Gorilla Glass 5 for the OnePlus 12, but Apple doesn't specify if it's using any sort of glass protection, but it's sturdy enough. Look at this. Every single time I do that, somebody winces behind the camera. But the one thing to notice, and one thing that is very important for you to decide, is if you want a smaller phone or a big phone. Because the OnePlus 12 is definitely a big and heavy phone compared to the iPhone 15, which is small, comfortable, and easy to use with one hand. Now, talking about the camera layout, I mean, you've all seen this camera layout for multiple generations of previous OnePlus phones and previous iPhones. So yeah, it looks good. Uh, and of course, OnePlus has more, you know, camera rings primarily because it's also got more cameras. Also, one thing to note is that the iPhone 15 has a purely blocky, boxy, flat design, flat display design, whereas the OnePlus 12 has curves on all sides. Now, talking about the display, of course, the flat display of the iPhone 15 is protected by ceramic shield, whereas the OnePlus 12 has Corning Gorilla Glass Victus 2 protection. Now, one thing's for certain: in my time with Corning Gorilla Glass Victus and ceramic shield, ceramic shield scratches. Very easily. Of course, the Victus 2 will also scratch at some point, but the scratch resistance is better. Drop resistance and impact resistance wise, both are fairly okay, fairly good. Nothing to separate the two. On the side, you've got a proper metal aluminium frame on both the phones, and on the iPhone 15, you've got a flat side with like a matte finish, which I really like, which looks very premium. This is of course shiny and glossy and very ostentatious, if you ask me. But one advantage on the iPhone 15 is that you get proper IP68 rating, which makes it waterproof. Whereas on the OnePlus 12, you get IP65 rating, which makes it water resistant. But the OnePlus 12's display can be used even when you know water falls on the screen. So there's this rain touch thing that they've enabled, and it works really well. There's another functional advantage on the OnePlus 12, and that is the fact that you get an IR blaster, which of course is not there on the iPhone 15. But what the iPhone 15 has is the mute switch, whereas the OnePlus 12 has the alert slide. Now I do like the alert slider implementation better than the mute switch. Now with respect to the SIM slot, you get like a single SIM slot on the iPhone 15, and you can use a secondary eSIM. Whereas on the OnePlus 12, we get a dual nano SIM slot. However, one clear advantage on the OnePlus 12 is the data transfer speeds with the USB Type C port at the bottom. You get USB Type C Gen 3.2 speeds compared to you know iPhone which has USB 2.0, iPhone 15. If you want faster data transfer speeds, you will have to buy the Pro iPhone. So overall, when it comes to the industrial design of these phones, the sturdiness, the functionality, all of that, it's a bit of a toss. Up and also a lot of you know whether you want the iPhone 15 or the OnePlus 12 would depend on whether you want a nice compact phone or you want a larger screen. Talking about which, the iPhone 15 has a smaller 6.1 inch OLED display, whereas uh, you know the OnePlus 12 has a 6.82 inch OLED display. Now both these phones also offer that XDR technology where you can actually see HDR content like photos and videos within your Photos app in proper HDR where the brightness is boosted. But the one biggest letdown on the iPhone 15 is of course the fact that you do not get a high refresh rate. Display it's only 60 hertz. On the OnePlus 12, we get a 120 hertz LTPO display, which means that it can actually refresh from 1 hertz to 120 hertz. This also helps in battery efficiency. You guys are aware of that. Now, both these phones also support Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus out of the box, which means that Netflix supports Dolby Vision out of the box, and content does look good on both the screens. But brightness is a metric that we definitely must talk about. The iPhone 15 has a peak brightness of 2000 nits, which of course you know enables itself when you're watching HDR content. And on the OnePlus 12, it can touch a peak brightness of 4500 nits. But that 4500 number, you guys have to take it with a pinch of salt, primarily because it only activates itself in a 1% APA. What matters more, way more. Is the actual brightness when you're using the display uh, in real life? Now, without getting into the numbers themselves, when we check the displays on both these phones outside, evidently the iPhone 15 was brighter uh, under direct sunlight compared to the OnePlus 12. Now, this is a concern a lot of you guys have raised. It doesn't really matter if the phone has 4,500 nits of peak brightness. What matters is the peak brightness in daily usage, which is basically when you push the slider or when the auto brightness kicks in under direct sunlight. 
Now, what also matters is the color accuracy of the displays. And when, when we notice both of them side by side, they're pretty color accurate displays and the HDR tuning has been done very well too. Now, both these phones also offer a stereo speaker setup. We heard them side by side. Clearly, the iPhone 15 sounds richer and louder despite being in a compact body. You guys take a listen for yourself and let me know what you guys think. Now, another aspect of the display is the haptic feedback impact and OnePlus's haptic feedback is absolutely fantastic with O haptics and even iPhone has fantastic haptics as well. We all know about it with the Taptic Engine. I would say let's call this a tie because both have implemented it really well across the OS and the operating system and they feel tied and responsive when you type on the screen. By the way, definitely we must talk about the fact that the OnePlus 12's OLED display has an in-display, optical in-display fingerprint scanner and it's very fast to unlock, no problem. And you know, the iPhone has that dynamic island and uh, which also has all of your cameras to sort of use Face ID and unlock the phone. Now, both are very secure ways to actually unlock your phone. So I don't really have a choice per se. Now, coming back to audio, uh, one of the things that you must know is that Android phones generally support high-res Bluetooth codecs like LHDC and LDAC, which is also supported on the OnePlus 12. On iPhones, Apple still thinks that, you know, high-res Bluetooth is a myth and that's not really possible. So all you get is AAC. And now that you've got a Type-C port on the iPhone, you can also directly connect any USB DAC with it. That is something that I do for wired earphones. You can do that with the OnePlus 12 as well. Both are really good. By the way, one thing we must definitely talk about is that the OnePlus 12 has a curved display, whereas the iPhone 15 has a flat display. And the industry is moving towards flat displays now. What with, you know, the S24 Ultra also having a flat display. Samsung was the first one to actually get a curved display to the industry, right? And that also boils down to personal choice. Do you actually like curved displays or flat displays? I am clearly on the flat display camp because I don't like distortion around the edges when you're viewing content or, you know, when you're playing games, certain UI elements, they have problems because, you know, they are curved around the display display itself and you can't touch them, the touch points are slightly difficult and that apart, sometimes you also get ghost touches. So I like flat displays. What do you guys prefer? Let me know in the comment section below. But overall, when you look at the display and multimedia capabilities of both these phones, I think uh, OnePlus wins. All right, talking about performance, the OnePlus 12 has Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, LPDDR5 X RAM and UFS 4.0 storage on whichever variant you buy. And yes, I am of course hinting at the fact that OnePlus 12R has gone through a bit of a controversy right now. You can't buy a OnePlus 12R with the UFS 4.0 storage. Anyway, that's a discussion for a separate topic, but on the iPhone 15, you get Apple's A16 Bionic. Now, with respect to performance testing, the only benchmark that has parity between Android and iOS is Geekbench and 3D Mark Wireless Test Test. So we ran those two. Now, with respect to the CPU performance of the A16 Bionic, it definitely has higher single core performance, but Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 has beaten A16 Bionic in terms of multi-core performance. But OnePlus, of course, is very close to the iPhone 15 in multi-core scores. And in 3D Mark Wireless Test Test, Clearly, the iPhone 15 has better system stability or uh, GPU stability compared to the OnePlus 12. And that's generally what we noticed with our daily usage as well. The iPhone 15 would run cooler compared to the OnePlus 12. Of course, the OnePlus 12 didn't get too hot. They have managed to control the temperatures with the vapor cooling chamber inside. But yeah, the Snapdragon Agent 3 is a very powerful processor and to tame it is very difficult as well. Now, with respect to gaming, of course, a lot of people will gravitate towards, uh, you know, the OnePlus 12 primarily because it has a larger screen. Small screens are generally not conducive for gaming. And that apart, the OnePlus 12's uh, Snapdragon Agent 3 also supports ray tracing, which will of course make it future proof for games. And in games that support it, you also get 120 FPS because you have 120 Hz refresh rate display on the OnePlus 12. The iPhone 15 does it. So if you want a phone for gaming specifically, then I think the OnePlus should be the way to go. But that's only in context of these two phones. In fact, if you want a phone for gaming, I would suggest the iQ 12 instead. Regardless, the OnePlus 12 is a good performer, but OnePlus has definitely tuned it so that you get better battery life. And that brings me to the battery life of these two phones. While the iPhone 15 has fantastic battery life, uh, the OnePlus 12 clearly beats it. I easily got eight hours of screen on time every single time I was using the OnePlus 12 and I was using it, you know, properly, heavily. The iPhone 15 would last me at best about, you know, six to seven hours of screen on time. That about the OnePlus 12 also has much faster charging speeds of 100 watt and it'll charge the phone faster compared to the iPhone 15, that's for sure. And you also get wireless charging on the OnePlus 12 now. So that's again, matched with the iPhone 15. So when it comes to battery performance, I think OnePlus 12 wins here compared to the iPhone 15. And if you want a longevity in terms 
terms of battery life as well i think one plus would be the way to go now talking about network performance which is basically call quality or wi-fi performance gps performance nfc all of that i think both are equally matched literally nothing separating the two and i would generally have to talk about it if there were some anomalies or some problems but i don't see any issue here all right now let's talk about the software experience and that's going to be completely completely different for both these phones right i mean it's yin and yang android and ios and just like whether you want a big phone or a small phone a big chunk of whether you want the oneplus or iphone will depend on whether you like android or ios so the iphone 15 has ios 17 of course and uh, the oneplus 12 has android 14 and oneplus promises about four years of ota update support whereas iphone will give you at least five to six years so there apple does give you a bit of an edge but one thing i must talk about the software experience uh, on iphone is that it feels slightly more premium compared to what oxygen os offers with oneplus 12. of course oxygen os has a lot of you useful features like you can do split screen you have a floating window just a ton of you know interesting very useful features that are not available on ios similarly you can say the same thing that ios has dynamic island and the cool implementation with dynamic island which of course oneplus tries to ape with oxygen os because it's trying to you know attract the iphone audience but it's not really as good so feature set wise of course android will have more features but i think i know that a lot of iphone audiences are pretty loyal to ios so this i really cannot decide for you whether you should pick android or you know ios you will have to decide for yourself after you have used both of these ecosystems all right let's talk about cameras and now this is something that we can definitely check to see if iphone takes better pictures or oneplus does but before that hardware wise oneplus definitely has one advantage and that is the fact that you get a proper 3x periscope camera Camera, which is obviously not present on the iPhone 15, the base consumer iPhone 15. You get that only on the Pro models. I'm not getting into the details of the camera hardware, but let's take a look at the pictures now. When it comes to the primary camera, the iPhone 15 actually captures more details compared to the OnePlus 12. Now, you might think that the OnePlus 12 has a larger sensor, so it should take a better picture, but uh, the iPhone 15 has 24 megapixel pixel bend output, and that, I think, is a master stroke by Apple this year. Because everything is tack sharp and focused, and the phone also retrieves a lot of details, which OnePlus sometimes misses, despite the fact that OnePlus does capture very detailed images in daylight. When you zoom in 2x, you get the in-sensor crop on both the phones, and iPhone is still sharper compared to OnePlus 12. At 3x, of course, OnePlus definitely has a sharper image, and it definitely has an advantage over the iPhone. That's for sure. And even at 6x sensor crop zoom, OnePlus 12's picture is much better compared to the iPhone 15 because it captures more details. Now, coming back to the primary camera, the colors captured by both these phones are very identical, so nearly identical. And that's really good because both these phones capture very close to neutral looking pictures, which can be edited in post very well. That OnePlus 12 Hasselblad partnership is finally coming in handy. But one issue with the OnePlus 12 that I had noticed in the past and I'd also mentioned it is the fact that it sometimes has white balance correct issues way more than even the iPhone does. iPhone does have sometimes that problem, but not as much as the OnePlus does. When it comes to HDR processing, the highlight control is equally matched on both none of these overexposed. But when you look at the shadow region, you will notice that the iPhone 15 actually captures more details in the shadows and exposes the shadow slightly better. OnePlus has this slightly darker, more contrasty look in comparison. One of the primary use cases of using the cameras on both these phones would be to capture your friends and family. And in that regard, I would easily pick the iPhone 15 over the OnePlus 12. OnePlus 12 skin tones have improved drastically with that Hasselblad collaboration, but the iPhone 15 is just so damn accurate, man. Plus, it also captures more details. And when you're talking about portraits with the OnePlus 12, you can capture 1x, 2x, and 3x portraits. With the iPhone 15, you can capture 1x and 2x portraits. But the quality of the portraits that we captured, in that we noticed that the iPhone 15's portrait picture quality is definitely far more DSLR-like, primarily because it does uh, semantic segmentation better. And that apart, the bokeh drop-off looks way more natural and pure. And when you're capturing people against the light in HDR situations, OnePlus still has that slight bit of bloom problem that we've noticed in previous OnePlus phones. Of course, they've fixed it by miles, but you know, it loses out to the iPhone 15 still. All right, moving on to the ultra wide angle camera, the OnePlus 12 takes more detailed ultra wide angle pictures compared to the iPhone 15. This is especially evident when you zoom in and take a look at the roads or the roof rails besides the swimming pool. The iPhone 15's ultra wide image sample is also slightly grainy. It doesn't do noise correction as well as the OnePlus 12 does. But when you're talking about color science consistency, I have no doubt in my mind that iPhone beats the OnePlus algorithm primarily because it maintains color very well between all the lenses of the camera, which is the primary and the ultra wide. OnePlus sort of 
you know falls off in that regard now in low light one thing i clearly notice is that the iphone 15 actually is taking better pictures than the oneplus 12 primarily because there is one problem with the oneplus 12 even today and that is the fact that i had mentioned in my previous video as well is that oneplus actually is very very reticent in opening the shutter for longer in the night mode and therefore the shadows don't have enough details and it looks very very dark compared to the iphone 15's image which by itself is sort of an improvement over previous generation iphones but yeah it could be even better improved on the contrary the ultra wide angle low light pictures are better on the oneplus primarily because it has a much larger sensor and a better quality sensor compared to the iphone 15. now in telephoto low light shots of course the night mode algorithm comes to haunt the oneplus 12 once again primarily because it could have definitely captured more details from the shadows which it doesn't iphone definitely captures more details from the shadows even at 3x and you know we shot with the optical camera optical zoom camera of the oneplus 12 at 3x but if you look closely the oneplus 12 does capture slightly more details but yeah iphone's low light at 3x is equally matched if you ask me all right talking about selfies you've got an improved upgraded uh, 32 megapixel selfie camera on the oneplus 12 and it does take very good looking selfies but what we notice right next to the iphone 15 is that the oneplus 12 doesn't capture as much details as the iphone does which is very interesting because the oneplus is a larger sensor but iphone does capture very very good selfies but when it comes to skin tones it's a bit of a toss-up because we notice that iphone veers slightly towards the red with the selfies but that also depends on where you're shooting and sometimes you do get really close to neutral skin tones like you'd get with the primary camera oneplus has uh, also very close to neutral skin tones with the selfie camera but you know i think iphone is better now when you're talking about selfies against the light what we notice is that iphone has a slightly natural looking hdr selfie compared to the over processed look of the oneplus 12 so the oneplus algorithm is generally just overcompensating out here now selfie portraits wise i think both have done a good job but i feel that the edge detection is slightly better on the oneplus 12 it's a bit of a toss-up but yeah here i think oneplus does a very very good job in fact what i notice with you know taking selfies is that generally oneplus does a better job than taking pictures of people with the primary camera which is very very good however in low light iphone selfies are way better than oneplus's now coming to video recording the thought in your head first thought in your head would be iphone would beat the oneplus 12 easily but that's not really the case both of these can shoot at 4k 60 fps and oneplus actually records higher bitrate video and higher bitrate audio as well but when you look at the final video whether the details the hdr performance and the way the video is graded there is a slight bit of advantage in the iphone 15 compared to the oneplus 12 but you know what something very interesting happened when we shot low light videos oneplus is doing a way better job compared to the iphone 15. iphone 15's video was grainy it was noisy oneplus actually has a brighter footage as well now of course if you want to zoom in and capture a video oneplus would be better primarily because you can shoot 4k 60 fps video with the 3x camera ultra wide angle video i think you can take a look at it for yourself iphone has slightly higher field of view compared to the oneplus but both are almost equally matched if you ask me now in selfie videos of course uh, this time around oneplus does give you 4k 30 fps video recording option but you do not get 4k 60 fps which is possible on the iphone 15 which makes it the winner by the way one thing i completely forgot to tell you is that iphone's stabilization is better than the oneplus 12 especially considering that you get action mode and the action mode tuning has been done fantastically well and that action mode is at a very high resolution of 2.8k as well plus on the iphone you get that cinematic mode there's portrait mode video on the oneplus 12 but it is not matched to the cinematic mode quality that the iphone can capture by the way you can also record dolby vision videos with both the phones but oneplus does it at 4k 30 fps where iphone does it at 4k 60 fps there is that certain bit of need that apple always has over android manufacturers when it comes to video recording so overall when you look at the camera performance and the video recording performance i think oneplus is actually very matched to the iphone 15 in many regards and it does a good job especially with the fact that you also do get zoom performance but you know if you look at it for a more premium sort of very well-tuned camera setup i think i still will go for the iphone 15. all right finally when you look at both these phones it's such a close fight and it's very difficult to pick one if you ask me and like i said a lot of your decision will rest on the fact that if you want a big android phone then oneplus definitely does a good job or if you want an iphone and therefore making that decision for you feels like i would be doing something wrong because i really don't know your personal preferences so what i want you guys to do in the comment section below is ask us the question of whether i should pick oneplus 12 or iphone 15 and a few parameters you must have to mention for example what is the current phone that you're using whether it's an android or an ios device secondly what is the size of the current phone that you're using thirdly how important is camera performance fourthly how important is gaming performance and finally how long do you want to actually use the phone all right so that actually makes this a very interactive video something that i want to do for decisions where it is very difficult for me to tell you outright that whether you should buy a particular phone or the competitor hopefully this comparison was helpful for you guys if it 
was of course do give this video a thumbs up maybe even subscribe to the channel we'd love your support and we'll start working on the next comparison or whatever else we are working on next and i'll see you guys in the next one until then keep checking and stay safe